welcome back today uh, we were discussing the last part of pharmacokinetics that is drug excretion so drug excretion as an introduction uh, in the previous classes i have we have discussed about pharmacokinetics and it is shortly known as adma it is a absorption distribution metabolism and excretion so we will be discussing the final part it is the excretion what is excretion it is excretion is the passage out of systemically absorbed drugs it's just the movement of systemically absorbed drug outside and uh, what are excreted so unchanged drugs or metabolites so the drugs full of them may not be used in our body um, or full of them may not be metabolized full of them may not be absorbed so the unchanged drug will be excreted and also the metabolites so some drugs will be absorbed it will be used in our body and sometimes it will be metabolized and the metabolite will be formed and thus that also should be excreted and the excreting substance will be polar compounds the final product will be polar compounds the organ or regions of main excretion are renal biliary fecal and alveolar these all are the primary site or major site of excretion so the renal biliary fecal and alveolar so the kidney the liver the feces and the lung will be act as the major excretion process and sweat saliva and milk also have some excretion so the sweat and saliva and the milk also will have some excretion now renal excretion re kidney is the most important organ for excretion kidney are the most important organ for excretion net renal excretion means it is the glomerular filtration plus tubular reabsorption minus tubular reabsorption so the net renal excretion is equal to glomerular filtration glomerular filtration which occurs in the bowman's capsule then the tubular secretion some uh, the the tubes the vasa recta and all can uh, secrete some substance into the lumen of the uh, glomerular filtrate so the, the the net effect or the net positive factors are glomerular filtration and glomerular secretion and minus the tubular reabsorption the the tubules some substance will be reabsorbed from the tubules so the net product will be glomerular filtration plus tubular secretion minus tubular reabsorption as already told three principal processes are glomerular filtration tubular secretion and tubular reabsorption so here in the bowman's capsule it will filtrate all the substance some substance should be reabsorbed some substance should be secreted so some drugs will be secreted from the uh, the capillaries into the lumen and some things will be some fluid or some drugs will be absorbed from the kidney uh, some these tubules distal tubules so the final product will be glomerular filtrate plus tubular secretion minus drug reabsorption okay this is the process normal process occurring in the kidneys glomerular filtration it is a non selective unidirectional flow here non selective so it can absorb so when the blood is moving through the bowman's capsule the it will be filtrated here the pores will be there and it will be filtered and it is a unidirectional there is no back flow only downward flow so from the front arteries the drugs will come drug or any substance will come and it will be uh, filtered here and the rest will move to the efferent arteries okay and the non protein bounds will be uh, easily filtrated so uh, the proteins will not be filtered here so the protein bounded drugs will not be filtered down only non protein bounded drugs will be freely filtered here and uh, act as a negatively charged selective barrier and the barrier act as a negative charged barrier then the normal gfr the normal glomerular filtration rate is 120 ml per minute so per minute 120 ml is filtrated here and there are three factors one is molecular size so the filtration depend upon the molecular size second factor plasma protein binding which i have already told the proteins will not be filtered so when the drug is attached or uh, bind to the protein it is very difficult for it to be filtered and renal blood flow 
renal blood flow is also an important factor so when when the renal blood flow is dampened or when the renal blood flow is slow the filtration also will be slowed slowed down and the driving force for filtration so is the capillary hydrostatic pressure wedge pressure it is known as capillary hydrostatic wedge pressure so it is the driving force so something should be forced there then only the filtrate will move outside through the pores in the bowman's capsule now the active tubular secretion what is tubular secretion it is the carrier mediated process so we need a carrier or a mediators for undergoing a active tubular secretion if it is a carrier mediated itself it will be energy dependent process and it is the active transfer of a organic acid or bases mainly occurring in the proximal tubules so the initial part of the tubules and also again it also depend upon the renal blood flow when the renal blood flow is slow the active tubular secretions also slow down here you can see the yellow 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 tube is the renal tube and the red is capillary so there is some transport mechanism occurring here between the h plus k plus urea and rux they all are secreted to the distal tubule so the our uh, plasma bounded or protein bounded or large molecular substance will not be absorbed in the or will not be filtered in the glomerulus so there it will come through the uh, efferent arterioles from there it will be secreted to the distal tubules and uh, already i have told we need some transporters for transporting this active process they are like organic acid transport by oata transporter organic acids will be transported by oata transporter organic base by oct so this are the different types of transporters and there is an efflux transporter p glycoprotein and mrp2 they also act as a transporter for this active process so orga for the acid it has got some specialized uh, uh, transporters base also there is specialized uh, transporter so you have to understand that for acid i have separate uh, acid transporter for base it have some basic transporter and the flux transporter is also there they are act independently like uh, peak like a protein and tubular secretion is a bidirectional process glomerular filtration i have already told it is a unidirectional only the the compounds will be filtrated there is no back flow but here there is a bidirectional flow the protein bound does not binding does not interfere drugs utilizing same active transport compete with each others okay uh, i have i already told there is for acid substance there are acid transporters if there is a two drugs and they are both are acid drugs and they have only one transporter so they will compete each other and one with having more affinity will be transported very fast here the probenecid and the penicillin when the probenecid and penicillin is given simultaneously they uh, the the transport is same for probenecid and penicillin so in here the penicillin is more uh, affinity mostly has got more affinity to the transporter so the penicillin will be more absorbed or more secreted high affinity for organic anion carriers excretion of penicillin is decreased okay so the the the, the penicillin absorption will be more instead for penicillin probenecid will be passed to the renal tubules now the third part is the tubular reabsorption it mainly occurs in the distal tubules the reabsorption means the the drug which is in the renal tubule will be reabsorbed to the blood stream so it helps to or it will increases the duration of action it increases the half lives so it increases the half life of a drug and this is a passive diffusion here there is no energy needed but the tubular secretion is a energy needed process and it depend upon the lipid solubility and ionization of the drug and uh, for excretion i have told the drug should be water soluble and non polar uh, for absorption it should be lipid soluble and non polar so here also the reabsorption it depend upon the lipid solubility and ionization so if the drug is more lipid soluble it will be absorbed there is chance for absorption from the distal tubule and if the drug is a uh, non polar drug again there is a chance for absorption from the tubular region okay and uh, a few words of alkalization hmm? and uh, here also there is some difference in acid and alkali or bases for uh, uh, secretion i have told uh, there is a separate pathway or separate transporters for acid substance and alk uh, alkaline substances 
so here also reabsorption also there is some difference in alkalization and uh, acidification so alkalization uh, alkalization means the poisoning of barbiturates and salicylate so uh, during the po time of po poisoning of barbiturates and salicylates we no need to reabsorb these barbiturate salicylate we have to excrete them through the urine so we, sh we we don't need to reabsorb them at that time we will alkalize the urine or will uh, do some procedures to alkalize the urine so the the transporters will not act and the drugs will be eliminated and acidification is also there a process by uh, giving some drugs like vitamin c and all will we make acidification or they will make urine acidified but there is no uh, clinical practice or uh, not clinically practiced so there is no advantage for acidification but instead alkalinization in some uh, poisoning like barbiturates or salicylate which are acids so the acid absorption should be reduced by alkalinization now the factors which depend uh, factors which modifies the excretion age age is an important factor in neonates the gfr is low and also there is a decrease in tubular secretion so we have to uh, take this consideration that in neonate the drug elimination will be low because that gfr will also low in the tubular secretion also low so we have to consider elderly and elderly also in the same situation both the gfr and tubular secretions are will be reduced so when we give drugs we have to consider this factor in this population and disease states disease states means some uh, pathological conditions also alter the elimination out of that uremia uremia means uh, uh, high urea in the blood so in the conditions of uremia uh, here also it will impair the gfr that is glomerular filtration rate uh, which leads to accumulation and drugs which can lead to toxicity okay so this uh, these two are an important factor we have to keep in mind when we administer a drug which is excreted through urine now biliary excretion the bile juice secreted by hepatic cells bile juice we know bile juice is secreted by the hepatic cells 90% of them is reabsorbed which is uh, uh, the high polarity drugs metabolites will be excreted so uh, in the metabolism class i have told that the by products or the final products which are high polar and also high molecular weight will be excreted through the bile so the 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 drugs with high polarity and also high molecular weight will be excreted again this is also an active process the drugs like q9 colchicin vinblastin vecronium corticosteroids and erythromycin these all are excreted through liver or through bile and <coughs> there is an important factor like reabsorption in the kidney liver also and this liver intestine also there is an important system called enterohepatic circulation endero means intestine hepatic means liver so between the liver and intestine there is some connection that is known as enterohepatic circulation the phenomena of cycling of drugs between intestine and the liver so it is the the drugs will be the drugs which are eliminating through the bile they will be reached in the liver they will be excreted to the bile bile will be excreted through our feces which goes through the intestine but the intestine there is some absorption which leads to which take the drug again to liver so there will be a cycling of drug from intestine and liver the drugs like cardioglycosides rifampicin chloramphen uh, chlorpromazine and indomethacin these all are uh, the drugs which undergo intrahepatic circulation advantage means the increases the t half then what is t half we will discussing about t half later Uh, t half means the mm, the time required for a drugs to become its half or uh, time required for a uh, drug to uh, the concentration of drug to become half of the initial concentration that is the t half okay we will come later in detail uh, here the enterohepatic circulation will helps to increase the t halves so the drugs like ocps ddt all can be uh, the the t half will be increased due to this enterohepatic circulation prolongation of duration of action as i have told that there, there is a cycling so the the bile the drug is excreted in bile but again it is absorbed from the intestine so again it reaches the liver excreting through the bile again the cycling is happening so it can helps to increase the prolongation of action mainly rifampicin 
Now the factors influencing biliary excretion. These are physiochemical properties. High polarity and metabolite, nature of metabolite, nature of biotransformation. Phase 2 reactions like gluconotide conjugation, they all are mainly uh, excreted by biliary excretion. Now alveolar excretion. Alveolar means through the lung. Here also it is a simple diffusion. Induct gaseous drug excreted. So the gaseous drugs are more excreted through the alveolar. It depends upon the partial pressure in the blood, pulmonary blood flow, rate of respiration and solubility of drug. So it the drug depends upon the partial pressure in the blood, pulmonary blood flow, rate of respiration and solubility of the drug. The drugs with the high solubility in blood will have high solubility in air also. So these the dr drugs with uh, which are excreted through lung will be having high solubility in blood because they are absorbed through the lung and also excreted through the lung also. Here general anesthetic, general anesthetic an important thing is that the site of absorption is the same as the site of excretion. So the alveoli is the primary unit for absorption, the same alveoli is the primary unit for excretion. So the exams like halothane, nitrous oxide all are general anesthetics which are given through our lung and also excreted through the lung. And the alcohol and uh, paraldehyde, these all have, these all substances are also have some excretion through the alveoli. Now salivary excretion, again this is a passive diffusion, unionized lipid soluble drugs will be excreted. And here basic drugs are more excreted through the saliva. But it undergoes cycling, the most drug will be salivary. The, the only a few amount, less than one percent, will be excreted through our saliva. It's, uh, because that is saliva, we are uh, we are absorbing or we are swallowing our own saliva. We won't spit saliva much. So that's why uh, there is no clinical importance. But some drugs can excrete through saliva also. The drugs are lithium iodide and heavy metals. Drugs like lithium iodides and heavy metals. So in our saliva, we will if we are having these type of drugs in our saliva. These drugs, the, the amount of drugs will be there in the saliva. But we usually swallow our saliva when there is a cycling occurring. Skin excretion and the keratin precursor cells. Keratin acts as a precursor for some cells, hair follicle, and sweat. These all are the methods of excretion through skin. It is here full win, uh, mainly absorbed or mainly seen in the keratin. Hair follicles, arsenic, mercury, iodide all are seen in hair follicle and sweat, urea, heavy metals, benzoic acid, salicylic acid and alcohol and all. These all are uh, excreted through our skin. So when there is a heavy metal poisoning like arsenic or mercury, we usually, the clinic, the, the, the clinic examination is mainly by examining the hair follicles with the presence of this type of heavy metals in the hair follicle means if there is a uh, heavy metal poisoning. Okay. And finally, the milk excretion. Milk. Uh, the importance of milk is that uh, the it is the main suckling of infants. So uh, the excretion, the drugs which are excreted in milk, is important in infants. It is a passive diffusion. More lipid soluble drugs are excreted, and also the pH is also 6.6. .6. So uh, it's more acidic. And the basic weak basic drugs more than weak acidic drugs. Small amount which reaches the infant. So we have to be very cautious when some these type of drugs, lipid soluble or pH drugs, when we are administering to a mother who is breastfeeding its child, the child may get the drugs which are taken by mother also. And the important drugs which are uh, excreted through the milk or the presence of drugs in milk and the adverse effects in the children. So chloramphenicol, it is an antibiotic, a broad spectrum antibiotic, which is, which uh, if taken by the mother, can go to the infant by milk and causes bone marrow depression in infant. So the, the child will get a bone marrow depression. Dicepam, again the child will be having sedation. Methadone, child will be having withdrawal syndrome. Arbimazole, suppression of thyroid function. Uh, sulfonamides, kernictras. Penicillin, allergy, dapson, hemolytic anemia, phenytoin, methemoglobinemia, thiophilin, restlessness, ampicillin, diarrhea. So all these things occurs in the mother and also in the infant who is taking mother's milk. 
okay so all the adverse effects can be seen oh, so the, the the specific adverse effects to the specific drugs will be seen in the infant who is taking milk okay and uh, finally the gastrointestinal excretion here the water soluble and ionized drug will be excreted uh, magnesium sulfate streptomycin neomycin bacitracin cholestyramine corticosteroids and chlorpromazine these are the drugs which are excreted uh, which can be excreted through gastrointestinal route okay now we move to uh, some important uh, factors in excretion the first one is plasma half life so it is the time taken for a plasma concentration to be reduced to the half of its original value so <coughs> if there is a hundred um, numbers of a drug or a hundred milligram of a drug we are administering or reaches the hundred milligram reaches the plasma concentration so the t half plasma half life or t half is the time required for this hundred milligram to become 50 milligram okay so the 100 milligram to become a okay, 50 milligram this is the, the time required for reducing the initial concentration to half is known as the plasma half life and if you draw a concentration time gram in, 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 during absorption class also i have shown this graph so the x axis shows the plasma concentration and the y axis is the time when the drug is given iv initially uh, there will be a large concentration concentration in our uh, blood hmm? so when we take a semi log semi log we will get a straight line otherwise it is a curved line so in semi log initial part there is a curving known as alpha phase it is due to the distribution so distribution means it is the faster distribution of the drug to different organs from there it is gradually reduced because elimination so two phases will be there alpha phase and beta phase alpha phase is due to distribution and beta phase will be due to elimination okay so the total time uh, required for the initial concentration to become half is known as the plasma t half plasma t half elimination t half is equal to uh, log 2 by k it is 0.693 by k k is an elimination constant so k is equal to clearance divided by v okay so t half can be calculated as 0 0.693 into uh, v by clearance what is v v is the bioavailability v is the bioavailability into clearance so 0 0.693 into bioavailability by clearance sorry by not viability our uh, volume of distribution sorry v is the volume of distribution by clearance and uh, uh, the fractional amount remaining or the percentage of drug remaining after a uh, given number of half lives so consider so consider we are giving a hundred percentage a drug is hundred percentage zero half life for initially it is hundred percentage and the uh, excreted will be zero so after the first half life so first half life means 100 will become 50 it has reduced the 50 and the drug eliminated will be 50 percentage after the second half life again the 50 will become half it will become 25 so the total will be eliminated will be this 50 plus this 25 so 75 after third elimination again the half of 25 it is 12.5 so the total element will be 75 plus 12.5 it is 81.5 after fourth half life again the half of 12.5 it is the 16.6.25 the total element will be 93.7 that means 77 87 plus 6.23 and the fifth elimination fifth half life again the half of 6.23 is 3.19 and the eliminated will be 96 percentage so uh, as a conclusion uh, the after 4 to 5 elimination or after 4 to 5 t half the drug will be eliminated completely from your body okay so uh, for a complete elimination of a drug from our body it's take 4 to 5 half life okay this is the important factor you have to understand 
at the end of fifth half life most of almost 97% of drug is eliminated so it takes say five half lives it takes five half lives for a complete elimination of the drug from the our body uh, approximately uh, full 97 means it is approximated to 100 percentage so after five half lives about 97 percentage or up to 100 percentage shell will be eliminated from our body now what is clearance clearance is a measure of body's efficacy in eliminating drug from systemic circulation so it's just the efficacy of the body or uh, the it is a measure of efficacy of eliminating drug from our system circulation clearance is the measure of body's efficacy in eliminating drugs from our systemic circulation it is a theoretical volume of plasma from which the drug is completely removed in unit time it is a theoretical volume of plasma from where the drug is completely removed in unit time clearance is equal to rate of elimination by concentration rate of elimination by plasma concentration the clearance of several organs are additive so different organs have different clearance so they will be final product will be an additive process of each organ so the systemic clearance means clearance by kidney clearance by liver and clearance by other organs so the total clearance will be the sum of all uh, clearance of several organs separate organs example cephalexin the clearance is 4.3 ml ml per minute per kg with 90 percent of the drug is created unchanged in urine propanolol it is 6 ml per m minute per kg and it's mainly by the liver so the uh, rust is done by some other organs okay when we considering the uh, plasma t half and clearance and all we can divide or the kinetics of elimination into two there is two type of kinetics of elimination one is first order kinetics and the other one is zero order kinetics first is the first order kinetics here the constant fraction of drug is eliminated in unit time so a constant fraction of drug is eliminated in unit time let's say if a drug uh, eliminates 50 percentage in two hours so the next two hours also it will eliminate the 50 percentage next other two hours also it will eliminate the 50 percentage of the amount so the constant fraction of drug is eliminated in unit time so every half lives a constant fraction will be eliminated here the rate of elimination is proportional to drug concentration rate of elimination will be proportional to the concentration so when the concentration increases a constant fraction is eliminated so the same fraction will be eliminated so when the drug is high so the concentration of initial concentration is high the elimination is also high okay here the t half remains constant okay for most drug at steady state the clearance remain constant for the most of the drugs the steady state remain steady state the clearance remain constant so the clearance is equal to rate of elimination by plasma concentration we have already seen in these cases the clearance will be rate of elimination by plasma concentration and the log plasma concentration time curve is a linear line for example majority of drugs are eliminated by first order kinetics okay see here here uh, uh, consider a drug is 200 milligram we have given 200 milligram and the t half is 2 hour so after 2 hour it should be become 100 so the 50 percentage is eliminated and become 100 next to 2 hour the 50 percentage 100 will be eliminated so it become 50 okay in the next 2 hour the 100 per the 50 percentage 50 will be eliminated so it will become 25 so the 50 percentage is constant okay so the a constant fraction of drug is eliminated so when we take a three so when we take it in 300 milligram the first two hour it will eliminate a 50 percentage so 150 will be reached so the next hour again 50 percent of 150 so uh, that's constant it goes on okay now the zero order kinetics here the constant amount of drug is eliminated in unit time the other one is constant fraction of the drug here the constant amount of drug is eliminated and the rate of elimination is constant irres irrespective of the drug concentration so the rate of elimination will be constant for the drug drug concentration the t half never t half is never constant the clearance decreases with the increases in concentration 
T half increases with the decrease in concentration. Here you can see. Here uh, there is a example when a drug is 200 microgram and in two hours it has eliminated 50 microgram. So here a constant amount is eliminated and it become 150 microgram. So next two hours, next T half again it can only eliminate 50 microgram. So it takes a it makes 100 microgram. Next two hour again 50 microgram. Here the amount is constant 50 microgram, 50 microgram, 50 microgram. But the initial case it was percentage 50 percentage, 50 percentage, 50 percentage. So that means the concentration will be reducing in a slow rate only. Slow rate only. The initial part, initial, the first order kinetics it was 200, then it became 100. Here it, it instead it became 150 only. Next two hour it become 200, I mean 100. So the the amount of drug eliminated is constant here. So T half never is a constant. We, T half we can't say it is a constant T half. Okay. And zero order kinetics is also known as mixed order kinetics and it is saturable. So when uh, there is high or a large amount of drug is there which undergoes zero order kinetics then it takes so many times to and the, the, the T half will not be constant. So it takes so many hours to eliminate the whole amount. But uh, in the first order kinetics we can tell that within 5 T halves a major majority that is 91 percentage of drug will be eliminated. But zero order kinetics we can't tell that after 5 order kind or 5 uh, T halves the full the, the drug is fully eliminated. Okay. And it is a non-linear, also known as Michaelis Mendel elimination, and it is a capacity limited elimination. Saturation kinetics due to saturation of metabolizing enzymes or elimination processes. So uh, this is because that uh, the the eliminating processes or the metabolism enzymes will be saturated. So in the initial classes, I have told that for excretion we need some, um, or sorry, for metabolism we need some enzymes. So, and it is a saturable process. So, if there is a 100 uh, compound and a 100 enzyme, they can saturate. Uh, it will be saturated. If there is, there is a uh, 100 compound and only 50 enzymes are there, the rest of the 50 will be left over. So, the saturation kinetics means it due to saturation of metabolic enzymes or elimination process. Kinetics changes from first order to zero order at a higher doses. Is known as mixed order kinetics also uh, in our zero order kinetics so same same way when the concentration becomes higher it become a zero order kinetics okay in the low concentration they uh, they act like a first order kinetics but higher doses or higher concentration they act as a mixed order kinetics drugs like phenytoin ethyl alcohol theophylline and warfarin so they these all are these all drugs will be first order kinetics in the initial concentration or the slow, low concentration they will be like act as first order kinetics but at higher doses when in toxicity and or they undergo zero order kinetics and it increases the prolongation of action and leads to toxicity digoxin aspirin dolbutamide these all are drugs having a mixed order kinetics at higher doses okay again we can see here the average concentration of the drug and the dose rate so the the average concentration will be increasing 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 in the it is a linear process in the blood but the in the zero order kinetics there will be a slow slanting okay it will not be linear now an important uh, factor called the steady state plasma concentration steady state so for a treatment and all we need a steady state of concentration of drug in our body that is called steady state is the plasma concentration of the drug at which rate of absorption equal to rate of elimination okay in the initial class of absorption i have told there is a equilibrium between the drug absorbed and the move so some drugs will be absorbed in the blood and some reaches in the blood so there is an equilibrium will be maintained so when the uh, drug in the uh, uh, blood metabolizes few more will be absorbed same way the drug which re uh, which are absorbed and eliminated will be having a equilibrium so the plasma concentration of the drug at which the rate of absorption is equal to rate of elimination it is known as the steady state concentration 
and it is uh, calculated by steady state is calculated by dose rate divided by clearance dose rate divided by clearance and here also the steady state is achieved by 5 t halves as i have told steady state is oh, sorry the after 5 t halves the drugs can be eliminated uh, about 100 percentage same way after a 5 t halves the drugs can reach a steady state if you give a successive doses in steady state the plasma concentration rises and falls within a therapeutic range okay so in a steady when the if the drug reach in a steady state after our continuous or administration or uh, or successive administration then the rise in concentration and fall will be in therapeutic range so it will not be uh, very low the therapeutic range or very high the therapeutic range so it will be inside the therapeutic range so the toxicity less toxicity and has got a good action okay so this is a uh, the graph showing the steady state hmm? here uh, when we give a drug it gradually increases then after t flop it will become half at the t half when we administer again the same dose will have an extra amount so when we again next half life in that way when we give the when we administer drug multiple doses at e every half life after a five half life it can reach a steady state then the concentration of elimination and concentration of absorption will be somewhat similar now the loading dose this is a single or few quickly repeated doses given in the beginning to attain a target concentration rapidly so i have told we have to reach a steady state for a therapeutic action so the drug should be in a steady state in the plasma concentration for a therapeutic action so first we have to give a sometimes we have to give a large dose or a quickly successive repeated doses to reach that steady state so this is a single or a few quickly repeated doses given in a beginning to attain the target concentration rapidly and uh, the, the uh, calculation is by target concentration into volume distribution divided by bioavailability and this does, does not depend upon the clearance it depend upon the bioavailability so how much the drug is absorbed that is the factor which determines the loading dose now the maintenance dose so we have to keep that same concentration in the blood so we have to give some maintenance dose this is the dose is to be repeated or a specific interval after the attainment of concentration steady state concentration to maintain the same balance elimination balance elimination that means we need a steady state concentration for some treatment so for reaching that steady state we sometimes we give large dose or a successive doses it is for the first time so and we have to maintain that steady state for a long time for a prolonged treatment for that we have to give some maintenance dose okay this is the dose repeated specific intervals to attain the specific concentration and it it is calculated by target concentration into clearance by by availability okay so here it is depending on the clearance here it depend upon the clearance the other one was volume of distribution so the uh, loading dose depend upon volume of distribution and the maintenance dose depend upon clearance volume of distribution means the volume needed so for uh, the if you need a large volume we have to give a large amount of drug and for maintenance dose it depend upon the clearance if the drug has got long or uh, prolonged clearance time then we have to give only a small amount after the drug is cleared very fast we have to give a large amount in successive doses or we have to increase the interval of our repetition okay so the loading dose depend upon the uh, volume of distribution and the uh, clearance depend upon the uh, the maintenance not depend upon the clearance okay that's all we will stop the excretion so uh, in the excretion part the important uh, things are plasma half life steady state concentration and loading dose and maintenance dose and all so uh, again you have to read the concerned taxity book and if there is any doubt you can contact any of the faculty in our department we are here to help you at any time so don't hesitate to ask your doubt and 
I hope these presentations are helping you. So read the textbooks and stay home, stay safe. Thank you. With regards, Dr. Rahul.